Okay, so this session is on mosaicism and its effects on uh, array CGH measurements. So uh, let me talk about what, what does it mean first so we're all on the same page uh, with mosaicism. Um, so a normal diploid sample is one that every cell has two uh, copies of the chromosome. So this is a very simplified organism with two chromosomes in it, the blue and the, the green, chromosome one and two and all the cells have two copies. Now, in the case where everything, uh, we have a tissue that's monosomy four, uh, two in this case, so chromosome two lost one copy in all the cells. So this is nice and this is what happens in the pure case. But in many cases, uh, especially in cancer, you might have normal samples. So in this case, there's 50% mosaic because uh, half of the cells in the, the tissue that I'm looking at or making the measurements from are normal and the other half has only one copy of chromosome 2. Now the mosaicism can go even farther down. This is 25% mosaic, so one out of four is, is aberrant and it can keep going down um, from there. So this is uh, the measurement that you're getting is a measurement that's combination of the normal and the aberrant cell. Uh, things, especially in cancer, could get even more complicated with a multiclonal sample where you have your normal and you have um, certain percentage, like in this case, this is 25% normal, 25% monosomy, chromosome 2, and 50% trisomy on chromosome uh, one. And the signal that you're getting is a composite of all of this. So in signal processing, the term is called deconvoluting. So you, you have to deconvolute from the signal that you're getting is what are the clonal population. And in many times, it's very hard. It's not impossible uh, to do that. But um, you can at least get close. So we're only going to talk about not multiclonal, but just the effect of mosaicism on the measurements today. So uh, how does the log ratio change? So this is just a simple Excel spreadsheet that says if I have one extra copy, what is the ratio uh, in a duploid case? So it's 3 over 2, so it's 1.5. One if I have two extra copies, I have 2 over 2 or 2. If I have one less copy, I have 0.5 as my uh, ratio. And as I dilute the aberrant versus the, the normal, um, you can see 75 percent this goes down and by the time you get to 25 percent the ratio is almost back to one which is normal um, so if you take the log of this table up here and plot it you can see at the hundred percent a one copy loss will give you a minus one log ratio and a 0.58 for a one copy gain but as you move towards the 25 percent mosaic um, you're almost getting to the zero line or the normal. So it becomes harder and harder to be able to pick it up and discern from a, a, a real gain or a real loss from, from noise. So we, we have discussed different methods for uh, segmenting or calling uh, copy number changes. So if you, in this example, we have a, a noisy data that has a gain here and a loss on the Q arm of chromosome 1 the normal in between, uh, and the gains are about at the 0.58 uh, level, and the losses are close to the minus one log ratio. Now, if this, and this is a pure, let's say, sample, but now if it's cancer and it ha is half normal stromal contamination, what happens is these probes get kind of squeezed down. And as they get squeezed down, if you're using the rank segmentation or CBS type of an algorithm, the distribution of the probes here no longer becomes significantly different from each other. So it just forms one big segment and shows up as normal. And this might be different, but your cutoff is not far enough for it to catch that loss. Um, a similar phenomenon happens if you're using a fast two segmentation algorithm. You move the, these guys down. Uh, what you could do with fast segmentation is when you move down the, the cutoff thresholds, um, the distribution changes, so it actually does allow you to better 
um, be able to find some of these low-level mosaic cases. So to show you that, um, let me go now into Nexus and in the data set tab. And I'm going to delete these two samples and start. Um, let's just view this, this one sample and talk about that um, in detail. So if you look at the distribution of the probes for this one, which I think is pretty interesting, is you can see that there are some losses throughout this genome. And over here on three, this is close to minus seven is the log ratio, and same here. But in certain other chromosomes, like, like the P-arm of chromosome 10, the, the log ratio is down to minus 0.3. And when you get down to like this chromosome 18, um, there is this, just a very little uh, dimple, I guess, it's low level, minus 0.1 almost. Um, so what this indicates is that this is a multi samples, and in the majority of the cells, there is a loss of uh, 5Q, but in less than maybe half the population, there is the or, or the cells um, have this uh, 10P deletion. So um, based on just the, the default settings, these are the calls that are made on chromosome 12, for example. Um, it's a good case, and I've used this before. This area is being called the loss, but the flanking areas are just missing the, the threshold. So a question becomes, at what level mosaicism do you want to pick up these losses? So we can clearly pick up these losses on these, uh, these other chromosomes. They show up nicely, like chromosome 3. Yep, this region is perfectly clear and lost. But as I showed before, the, the one here on chromosome 12, uh, parts of it shows up and other parts don't. And if you go back to, I think it was chromosome 18, it looks normal. I mean, it, it calls it as normal, but you can certainly see that there is a very tiny um, deviation there. So depending on how low of a mosaic level you want to call, you can make adjustments. So in this case, um, let me, again, I'm going to, I'll duplicate this sample and we are going to, let's process this sample by change the settings instead of 0.2 and minus 0.23, let's call it 0.1 and minus 0.1. So we're going to bring down the thresholds to detect even more low level mosaic event. So if I do that, you could see there we're making calls now on 6. Um, the big ones are still there, but on 12 we're making more calls and 18 as well. The, the downside, as you can see, or possible downside, is we've increased the false positive rates. Positive. So if we look at this area on chromosome 4, previously it wasn't being called but now it's being called as a gain. And you can see this, actually this is probably a real gain. This matches up with the CNV um, uh, track and there's been reported of uh, gains in normal population. So maybe it's not a false positive, maybe it is a, a, a real event. Um, but in case there were, let's find a false positive. So let's see, this is, again, this could be a real event. So let me break this up and we can look at it in detail. So this loss, is, which actually does look, again, very quite real, um, but it is very low-level mosaic, is being picked up now, and it wasn't being picked up before, along with other events. Now, one thing with the FAST2 segmentation is where you get, well, I, here it looks like it's either chromotrypsis or something like that, but um, but here, that was not the best example, I think 18 would be a better example. Right. So here, this whole region is, is lost in a very low-level mosaic event, but because it's so close to the threshold, you get this 
gain, I mean, normal and loss events scattered through. Um, so I like to, to have that, and it gives me an indication that this is a, a loss going on, but it's a very poor, um, low level. And then manually, you can go in here and decide if you want to call this as a loss or not. 